kuliko kibunga kinacho chuhudiwa nchini Msumbiji, Zimbabwe na Malawi. That story on page 2 of the Taifa Leo. You can see him here with his quintessential long beard holding court with uh, the women rep of Nairobi. This is Esther Pasares. Let's move on and we'll see also what we have on the front page of the East African this week. Troop drawdown in Somalia sharply increases risk. Security and the planned elections could be in jeopardy as the country continues to face increased terror attacks blamed on poor facilitation and funding of the National Army and Amazon peacekeepers. This story continues on page 8 and 9 of the East African this morning. And has Kenya abandoned the latest euro bond? That's the question. Gambit goes slow on borrowing binge amid turbulence in global financial markets and piling public debt. Kenya's plan to issue a third euro bond in the first quarter of this year seems to be in limbo as the country grapples with persistent turbulence in the global financial markets and protracted negotiations with the International Monetary Fund for reinstatement of a 1.5 million US dollars standby facility. Kenya's Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rutich last year said plans were underway to take a third euro bond in the first quarter of this year, but that looks unlikely with less than 10 days to the end of March. That is what we have on the front page of the East African this week. Also, still on the front page, we can take a quick look at Africa's big cities facing a thirsty future. It's all a matter of political will, which seems to have dried up. Uh, this is uh, tucked away inside the Outlook Pullout magazine in the East African this week. Well, I didn't get uh, my copy of a soft copy of the star, but this is what the star is holding for us this morning. Githu says, Rotich ignored my advice. Rotich ignored my advice on dams. That is the story. Former AG Githu Mwigai recorded a statement with DCI on Friday as a witness. Three CSs have so far been grilled over 61 billion shillings, Kimwarer and Aro dams. And you can see the faces as well here. Uh, Treasury CS Henry Rutich, also uh, Agriculture CS, that is Mwangi Kunjuri, also former AG Getho Guy, also Devolution uh, Cabinet Secretary Eugene Mwamalo, Treasury PS, that is Principal Secretary Kamau Duge, and uh, KVDA MD. This is uh, David Kimosop. All of all, all of these faces, I should say, were grilled by the DCI. Uhuru Ruto's strongholds oppose powerful PM position is another story that continues on page four and five of the Star this morning. I want to show you briefly also uh, some of the editorial cartoons that we have this morning. This is what uh, has been drawn by Steno inside the People Daily. I'll leave it for you to decipher this. Of course, it's all about drought and how Kenyans are hanging dry there on the cloth line because of issue of drought and graft. See how that particular tongue is jutting out as well. Which way, Kenya? That is according to Stano inside the People Daily today. Also, I want to show you what we have inside the star this morning. Right, this is how Deputy President William Ruto is dealing with Honorable Raila Odinga smashing his head, but it seems he's uh, hydra headed, multi hydra headed. So it's you smash one, it grows another way. So all these holes, 2022 referendum, uh, the corruption, all these, you know, a melange of things merged together is really, really confusing for a deputy president right now. So this is what has been drawn inside the people daily, not the people daily, but the star. To see if I can actually grab a copy of the hard copy of the People Daily to just show you what is on the front page. But we have a lot to cover. Make sure you grab a copy of the Daily Nation, a uh, copy of the standard for these riveting stories today. Just to remind you as well, there is uh, book serialization inside the Daily Nation. If you're waking up this morning and you're just catching up, uh, this catching up with us, uh, it's all about Moi knowing about 1982 coup plot. This is an autobiography of David Musila, Seasons of Hope. And it continues on page 10 and 11, where we have an excerpt, exclusive excerpt of that particular book inside the Daily Nation today. Right, just to remind you that there was a light earthquake which was felt in various towns in the country last evening. According to various international geological agencies, there was a 4.8 magnitude earthquake 55 kilometers northwest of Voi around Wundanyi. 
Kenyans online from Voi, Mombasa, Machakos, Kibwezi, Nairobi, Moranga, Meru and Kiambu said they felt the tremor. At about the same time, 7.20 p.m., there was earthquakes experienced in Spain, Turkey, Colombia and Indonesia. The quakes in Indonesia and Colombia recorded over 6.0 on the right, that is on the richest scale, with the ones in Europe under 6 on the richest scale. Peter Tabichi, a mathematics and physics teacher at the Keriko Secondary School in Nakuru, is the winner of the Vaki Foundation Global Teacher Prize 2019. Tabichi becomes the first teacher from Africa to win the 100 million shillings award that is in its fifth year. American actor Hugh Jackman announced Tabichi as the winner at a ceremony held in Dubai. The prize money is paid in the equal installments over 10 years, and the Vaki Foundation will provide the winner with financial counseling. For four years, Kenya. In the world that is likened to the Nobel Prize. And his story continues also in the Daily Nation today. This is uh, what you will uh, see here. Uh, if you just want to get the gritty details about Peter, this is on page two of the Daily Nation today, a story by Eric Matara. And uh, this is a face of Peter Tobici, the, the mathematics and physics teacher who won the 100 million shillings uh, inclusivity and child rights. Mr. Tobici, who is 36, has been a teacher for 12 years. And the winner was announced by movie star Hugh Jackman, as I mentioned there, uh, was he was chosen from top 10. He was chosen from top 10 finalists from all corners of the globe, uh, from teaching in remote towns and villages to inner city schools. The finalists advocated for inclusivity and child rights integrated migrants into the classrooms and nurtured their students' abilities and confidence using music, technology, robotics, and science. According to the Global Teachers Prize website, Mr. Tabiji has dedicated his life to helping others. He gives 80% of his teaching salary to local community projects, including education, sustainability, agriculture, and peace building. He's changed the lives of his students. I don't want to read the, the, all of it so that at least I can read, I can leave the rest for you to buy the Daily Nation. Right, so that is what is on the front page, uh, or not on the front page, but page two of the Daily Nation today, just to give you greater details about Peter Tabici. Congratulations to him. Now, as political leaders engage each other on varying issues, calls for a change in the constitution continues to grow among the electorate. According to the latest intro track poll, two in every three Kenyans support a referendum. Olive Barrows has more on this. The findings of a poll conducted by research firm InfoTrack in February shows that 65% of Kenyans are in support of a referendum. This marks a 21% growth of pro-referendum numbers compared to last December when 44% were in favor of one. It is worth noting that in December, the respondents were given the I don't know option, while in the latest poll, they only had the yes or no options to choose from. Of the 65% in favor, 52% are in support of a referendum whose objective would be to fix the ambiguities contained in the Constitution. While 38% support a referendum which they believe can reduce the number of elected leaders. 62% of those polled support the scrapping of the woman representative post and 59% want the position of senator done away with. The greater majority at 59% are opposed to the scrapping of the position of MCAs, while 57% support the creation of positions for leaders of the opposition in the National Assembly and the Senate. MCAs are the face of devolution, and as such, many Kenyans are reluctant or against the scrapping of the position of MCA. 
The 35% who oppose a referendum deem it unnecessary, too expensive, and only intended to serve the interests of the political class. Notably, the number of those opposed to a referendum in central Kenya has increased from 35% in December to 45% in February, while opposition to a referendum has declined in all the other regions. As for the system of government, 72% support a presidential system over a parliamentary one. You're watching This is Upon this, this Morning, and of course, we shall be with our panelists momentarily to discuss this, that story by Olive Barros, and a raft of other stories this morning. But YPA leader Kalonzo Musoka and his Ford Kenya counterpart, Moses Wetangula, have faulted President Uru Kenyatta over what they term as empty threats in the war on corruption. The two political leaders have urged the president to step up and fully let the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission and Directorate of Criminal Investigations carry out their constitutional mandate. And for the first time, you said what I've been telling you. Whether it's your brother, it's your ally, it's your cousin, it's your friend, whoever it is, kama meweka mukono kwa kikapu ya uma, shika eye, peleka maakamani. We have no time to lose. And this war against corruption and graft has to be won. We have no two-way traffic about it. Na mime nyemejitolea. This country looks upon him. He should stop crying like a baby. We should begin to see him deal with them. We don't want to budget. We want to be a national government. We are going to form government with others, or gov others may form government with us. Well, circumferentially, maybe I should ask by my members of parliament who are here to tell me if there's a word like circumferentially. I've never seen it. Right, forgive my ignorance. Politicians allied to Deputy President William Ruto are still hopeful that President Uru Kenyatta will support his 2022 presidential bid, despite the disquiet within Jubilee Party. The politicians, including the President or, or the Deputy President, once again trained their onslaught on NASA leader Raila Odinga, who they accused of harboring ulterior motives in the handshake. <laughs> If you seek a position of authority, it must be on the basis of what you are going to be able to do to serve your fellow man, not to serve yourself. And that is why wapende wasipende, rafiki ama adui, ndugu ama dada, wewe kama unataka kuingiana na mambo ya ufisadi, ya, tutapigana na wewe you can be my brother, you can be my sister, you can be my closest political ally, you can be <laughs> whatever you are, but you are an enemy of the Republic of Kenya and we will fight with you. To fight corruption to the bitter end has sparked political uproar, and that is not surprising. Perpetrators of corruption will never take such warnings lying down they're bound to fight back. Precisely, that is the thrust of the matter. President Kenyatta must disentangle himself from corruption networks around him if he is ever to win the war. Family ties, political pacts, or ethnic support must be shattered. This time round, President Kenyatta vowed to nail down any individual, family member, or political ally suspected of graft. Perfect. But our concern is that the president is good at issuing threats, yet there is no commiserate action. For the past six years, he's made the same proclamation countless times. Yet the level of corruption rises by the day. Pre previously, the losses were in millions. Now, they're in billions. Corruption has been perfected and taken a life of its own. Masterminds of corrupt deals have become bolder, less intimidated and smart manipulators. The public sector has become captive to the networks. No investment or development project runs full or cycle without loss of huge sums through dubious machinations. Therefore, 
We challenge the president to match his one. Siva ties and let the suspects face the law. Pseudo politicians who hang around him and use that to cut deals should be thrown out. Cabinet secretaries and other top public servants suspected to have stolen from the public must be shown their door. The president has executive powers and does not need anybody's go ahead to make decisions. We acknowledge that some bold steps have taken or have been taken in the past one year to rein in wrongdoers. Several top government officials have been arrested and charged in court with corruption or misappropriation of public funds. Unfortunately, none has convicted or has been convicted to serve as a deterrent to others. Hardly have the stolen funds been recovered and put back to the public use. Indeed, the public is picked that despite overwhelming evidence of culpability, several top government officials suspected and implicated in graft remain in office. Some have the audacity to rally their communities to insulate them against punishment. Others have the Im impertinence to challenge the anti-corruption crusade, dismissing it as discriminatory and vindictive. The president must move beyond issuing statements and crack the whip. Time for threats is over. Heads now must roll. And I'm joined this morning with our panelists to talk about this and a raft of other issues as well as far as politics is concerned. And uh, we have with us, once again, if you're joining us this morning, I'd introduce them at the top of the hour, Jared Okello, who's a member of parliament from Nyando. And also we do have with us Jeremiah Kioni, who is a member of parliament from Daragua, also the chair of CAC. CAC is the Commission uh, Implementation, Commission, Constitution Implementation, Constitutional Com Implementation, Implementation Committee. Committee. Right, I normally just get my words, you know, tangled up around it. We have Dr. Shemo Chuodo with us. He's a global leader of Kenya Diaspora Alliance. Also, we do have with us as well Samuel Pongisio, who is a senator of uh, West Pokot. We do have with us also the senator of Nyamira, or Congo Mogini, joining us today. Right, let's just begin with this uh, talk around Ruto right now to resign. And I know also, Jared, yesterday, at least you went to church. <laughs> Congratulations, right? <laughs> <laughs> so good morning. Good Once morning. again, uh, I just wanted to pick up something that uh, I read about you, and you said that, that Truto should resign right. if uh, this has been now the, t the political tone and tenor around this war on corruption, that he f is not really uh, supporting the president, then he should resign. And this is in the Daily Nation today. Maybe just uh, to flip over there to see what you said so that I don't misquote you. <laughs> then you say you were misquoted. <laughs> this is on page six. And uh, you said, quote unquote, if Uru will not work with Uhuru in the fight against graft and quest for unity, he should resign from government or we will remove him, said Mr. Jared Okello uh, Nyando, that is a member of parliament from Nyando, during a church service at Hallelujah Gospel Church in Banana Kiambu. You say we will not allow people to destroy what the president is building. We will remove him. And there are talks about impeachment. Is that in the offing? Well, thank you. Firstly, allow me to join you in congratulating Mwalimu Peter Tabishi. Fantastic. That even though there are many things going wrong in this country, mm -hmm. uh, a few good things uh, can still be found. Mm -hmm. And to win that Global Vaki Foundation Award isn't a mean feat. Uh, and therefore, as a country, we become very proud. Mm -hmm. uh, back to your question. Uh, there have been efforts employed by the executive to tackle graft, and this is a cancer that is eroding us, our dignity as a nation, yes. and denying Kenyans an opportunity to live a decent life. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, and I saw from one of the cartoons that you posted, mm -hmm. on our shoulders as a nation are graft and drought. And drought, you know, there have been certain interventions by the national government uh, to have dams in various places, mm -hmm. some of which have formed part of the uh, investigations. Uh, two dams, in fact, more than two dams, have been funded, nothing on the ground. In fact, uh, I was reading this morning that only 5% of the Arrow Dam has been completed, even though the monies that have been channeled that way or shoveled that way mm -hmm. are much more. So as a country, we have to join the president in this fight. And I remember when the handshake did take place uh, on the steps of Harambe House, one of the agenda items in the nine-point agenda was fight against corruption and inclusivity in government. Mm -hmm. So the fight against corruption is being done in order that this country can have value 
uh, for the monies that are coming from the exchequer. And if you are going to allow few individuals to take full advantage of these monies clandestinely, then as a nation we are headed to the wrong direction. We have seen that each time efforts are made to tackle graft, we have had the deputy president as a deterrent. He has made sure that certain breaks are applied, uh, misinformation, misapplication of facts have always been in place, up to and including the DCI whose mandate is to unearth uh, you know, corrupt scandals coming out to say that we are tracing the loss of 21 billion shillings. Unprovoked, the deputy president comes out to say, by the way, the DCI is wrong, it is 7 billion, and that 7 billion is insulated by way of insurance. I mean, wh who asked him this question? But if a person of the level of a deputy president who should give a lot of support to investigative agencies yes. coming out to give such kind of uh, information, then the resultant feature is he's trying to interfere uh, with these uh, kinds of investigations. So if the president has come out there and enjoying public goodwill, to fight graft and somebody comes out uh, to thwart the president's efforts, then you know he should do uh, w what is due, and that is to resign. And if he doesn't resign and Kenyans continue to lose monies and somebody is coming to block these efforts, then he has to be removed from office. Yes, you have said that uh, impeachment could be in the offing. But I think even under Chapter 6 of our Constitution on Leadership and Integrity and Article 10 on National Values, he should take the, you know, the, the, the responsibility of, of resigning without us as members of parliament coming after him. Right, but this is just a statement he's made. There's nothing that really uh, you know, raises pointedly to him as uh, violated any part of the Constitution as far as Chapter 6 is concerned. Well, if somebody is By yes. the way, let me tell you, Blocking justice is a criminal offense, and my, my good lawyer is here. He, he can uh, put more weight on that. You, you see what is happening in the U.S. now with the Muella report. Trump was trying to subvert the judicial process, trying to block justice, trying to block certain facts from coming above the surface, and now he's in hot soup. Why can it be a criminal offense in the U.S. and not a criminal offense here when somebody is trying to block investigative authorities by dissuading the trajectory uh, upon which these investigations are taking. So that in itself is, is wrong. Secondly, and most importantly, he comes out to say that the DCI does not have the constitutional backing to uh, investigate uh, you know, economic crime. Uh, and then he quickly says that the matter should actually go to EACC. The reason as to why certain people would perpetuate issues of EACC as opposed to DCI is because it is very easy to block EACC from performing its functions. Thank you. Right. So I want you to be very categorical with me. So is there any plot besides the Chapter 6 of the Constitution that you've mentioned? Is there any plot uh, and talks around impeachment of the DP? Well, uh, I talked uh, as Jared Okello, Member of Parliament yes. representing Nyando constituency, who is equally concerned, just like the President and the former Prime Minister, about corruption scandals in this country. If no action is taken, then we shall take it, or I will take it. You will take it? I will take what it. What action will you take? Well, you've to just talked about impeachment, and that is okay. under our purview as Members of Parliament. Right. All right, let, we shall talk about that uh, and uh, get granular with it uh, in a moment. <laughs> okay, let, let's just hear from uh, Jeremiah Kioni what is really ongoing right now. Uh, it's not just Jared who's mentioned this. Uh, we've had also members of the Jubilee Party, <coughs> like uh, the nominated um, uh, member of parliament, uh, minor commander, saying, yes, if he's actually not really supporting the president, then he should, be, he should resign. Do you think, from your own estimation, that uh, the statements carried around you know, carry any gravitas, should he resign? Well, one is that I, uh, the bar I think is that I think we need to be on record that we support His Excellency the President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta in the fight against corruption 100%. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is anything uh, better for this country that can be done at this time other than fighting corruption. 
In fact, I know on a number of occasions I've said that uh, if the president was just to achieve um, or to win this war against corruption, it's not easy to win 100%. But if it was to win this war against corruption and the country takes a different route as opposed to government officers wanting to you know, seek land from every government project, I believe that that can easily be enough legacy for the president. And um, all of us who are in Jubilee uh, to start with, before we get help from uh, uh, the, the NASA that is in pieces, uh, we should support the fight against corruption. And I want to support, to again go on record as one who will support fighting corruption again, just like the president said, it does not matter whether you are his friend, you are his uh, sister, brother, whatever. He must, uh, that is the spirit that we want to have on board. Uh, on the issue of having the, de the, the deputy president resign, I think uh, a couple of things are crucial. One, it is the work of the opposition or the minority party. I, I don't think they are really, we don't have an opposition in this country. It's the work of the minority party uh, to keep the government in check. And if my friend and colleague uh, feels that it is time to move parliament in that direction, that is uh, within his uh, uh, mandate. And we will uh, uh, deal with it when it comes to the floor. You need to really satisfy the requirements of the constitution for you to uh, support and win an impeachment move uh, on the floor. So I, I am, I, it doesn't annoy me nor does it uh, uh, irritate me at all. It actually makes it better for us because once you have a minority party that keeps you in check, it is uh, good for this country. Uh, as to whether we should then um, move on this issue on just um, rumors, that's again something that we'd wait, want to see whether a minority party can organize itself better than uh, just dealing with the rumors and um, uh, going to churches. This is we need to see a motion on the floor so that we can be able to support this. Certainly, uh, as a member of Jubilee, <laughs> and as a, a one who got to Parliament through Jubilee, yes, you respect me to defend the party uh -huh. position on um, when it comes to fighting our deputy party leader. Uh, when it comes to fighting the deputy president of this republic at a Jubilee ticket. You naturally expect us to defend because that is the work of, um, of us when we are elected. Uh, but of course, not bribery. Mm -hmm. We would want to ensure that uh, government resources are also not prodded. But um, uh, it should not be lost to us that, uh, unfortunately, the the campaign for 2022, if it's not well uh, handled, and I don't see it being handled in any other way other than the way it is now being handled can easily delay uh, the country's fight against corruption. There is now competing for 2022, and it is a question of uh, who makes the other one look more black than the other one, or uh, looking muddier than the other one, so that uh, you try and get some political uh, marriage. And um, that, you cannot take it away. That uh, seems to be the divining uh, thing now uh, okay. going forward, unfortunately. I would have preferred uh, ourselves to uh, fight this war without bringing the battle of 2022 on board. I am trying to say this so that uh, if my uh, very uh, good friend, I like him because he's very clear in his uh, statements, he has, he's one of the best English speakers that we have on the floor of the House, the member <laughs> of Parliament from. Again? Yes. Nyando. Nyando, Nyando not yes, again. Please. From Nyando. Um, I think the thing is that um, we, we uh, you know, w the deputy president has clearly said that he's going for 2022. And I, I'm sure a lot of attack will go his way for that reason. Thank you. The, di the difficulty will be to differentiate the attack that is going uh, towards him because of 2022 and for any perceived and uh, corruption campaign or uh, mindset that uh, uh, people may have. That, that is the bit. Um, oh. And when you attack me for, as a politician from drug, when you attack me with all this, I, you expect me to respond. Of course, how we respond is also very, very different. Uh, but I think 
all of us must support DPP, all of us must support uh, uh, Kinoti, Thank you. all of us must support the war against corruption. So the challenge is that uh, you, you mentioned that you don't want to hear innuendo and rumor mongering about impeachment. Mm. There's something Just bring there. the motion. Yeah, bring the motion. And you're yes. very challenged there, Jared. Uh, bring the motion. Since and, you've been one of them the uh, also that uh, you're in this particular lane of saying the DP should uh, be in, uh, he should resign, he should resign. If not, he'll be forced to. You'll be. He'll. You'll be forced to remove him. I don't want to be. You will come. We'll come to you later. Let, yeah. Let's hear from uh, <laughs> Dr. Shemoshodo. Good morning. Good morning, the bell. I, I was just referring to my constitution in terms of the provisions for uh, removing president or the deputy president. They are in articles uh, 144, 145. That's for removal of presidents either on grounds of incapacity or by impeachment, and 150 for removal of deputy president. Yes. Uh, obviously, for uh, in terms of capacity, the honorable member would uh, garner a quarter of the MPs to back that motion and would need uh, a simple majority. In the case of impeachment, he would require a third of the MPs to support that motion and also to remove uh, the deputy president or president uh, two-thirds majority. Uh, obviously, our case is a bit more complicated that you have to go both through the National Assembly and the Senate. But this is not to say it's not doable. In my view, there has to be good reason for, for doing it. Yes. And maybe there is a reason. Maybe clouds are gathering. But uh, <clears throat> uh, I would uh, take a slightly different view. I think we're focusing, our leadership uh, is focusing on matters that are not real Kenyan priorities. Mm -hmm. The fight against graft is a priority, and I'm glad that it's being uh, mounted. Um, and, uh, but there are also other priorities. Just yesterday, there was this uh, earthquake. We are told in some places, we, we told some parts of coastal Kenya should be preparing even for a tsunami. But I wonder how much effort we prepared to deal with that. If it was to happen, I'm not too sure our level of preparedness. So my, my thinking, the bad is that um, I think we need to get our priorities right. Yes, I appreciate Fighting graft was one of the nine points when the president and the prime minister signed. But remember, this was not the only one. There were eight other issues, which nobody is paying attention to. I see Kabila being dependent, maybe not in the same direction it was before. The national ethos, are they coming in? I take the position, and this is something that I picked from one of our very respected vice chancellors. The only way to stem corruption in this country is by having a honest national conversation, which I don't think we are having. People are calling each other names left and right. Even those who are culpable end up calling others names. They're very quick to do that. I think we need to have a very, na a very honest national conversation, but of course also allow due process. The court process that going on, the prosecutions, the investigations by the DCI, the DPP, and all need to go on. But if we cloud it with 2022, in my view, I miss it. Maybe I'll give advice to President Kenyatta for free in this regard. There is one thing that Kenyans love about our current constitution, the two-term limit. Anybody trying to push the, the president in that direction to extend term through the back door or directly would be, in my view, misleading the head of state. That's what I would say. So let's not bungle the fight against graft with 2022. Let's be truthful and honest. In fact, I think a problem that we're increasingly having is one of dishonesty. Mm. Our leaders don't, say, don't mean what they say, and they don't say what they mean, and that's a problem. All right. Orwa Pogiso, do you think this call for uh, the resignation of Deputy President William Bruto is premature? <clears throat> First of all, good morning. Good morning. And, uh, Again, let me join everyone in congratulating Mwalimu, uh, the chief of Nakuru, the, the, best, the teacher of the year, I guess the best teacher in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, his, his, um, his, 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 his story is very encouraging. And uh, like, like my, my colleagues have said, it, it gives Kenya a, a better, better name today. <laughs> in fact, in fact, I think you see the president congratulated him very much. We we, we would like to return to this issue that you have raised. Um, the Kenyans don't have the culture of resignations. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. 
even when you think really someone for their own sake they should resign nobody resigns you remember our famous uh, quote from a member who said i'd rather die <laughs> than, than resign that, that that is that is the way it is for us we also don't have a culture of successful impeachments uh, in this country any, any prop that's go through parliament uh, usually gets somehow scuttled and um, and even even you, you would see let me tell you if you start even an impeachment motion uh, you'll see that uh, it will be fought, it will be scuttled in any way, and so on. But it's good to try. I, I, I think the idea is good to try. Um, uh, because I know that Kenyans, <laughs> Kenyans are very good. And the corrupt are very, 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 very uh, clever people. It's good to try, actually. You cannot be corrupt that bad and not be clever. Uh, you know, they, 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 they are really clever, and they, have already, they already know that if you mix these things with 2022, you, you, you can divert attention. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that they're very clever because if you go to the Sundays, so church service, and I want to speak to my church, church leaders. I mean, the churches have become a place where people go to accuse each other. The churches have become places where people go to raise issues which are non-spiritual. Uh, and it doesn't help anybody spiritual. <laughs> Ask us, Jared. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he was on the he yeah. was on the pulpit yesterday. You know, you know, I, I I'm beginning to think that uh, people have found a place called the church now where they can go and and, and and speak at each other and so on. And so, if if for example they have done, if you go to those churches every Sunday now, it's about 2022. It's not about the corruption. Mm -hmm. And nobody talks about the corruption. They just go there and start, say, oh, you know, it's about you. It's about you 2022. It's not mm -hmm. about you 22. It's about you in corruption. So we need to then crystallize uh, the issues, as, as colleagues have said. I, I think that the president has spoken very clearly. I think he's very crystal clear that he's going to fight this, this thing. Uh, he, he has mentioned just about everybody who's corrupt. In his speech, there is, you know, his, his family, his friends, and everyone. Uh, uh, really mentioned everyone. So I, I believe that the fight against corruption needs to be supported. And uh, it's about time someone, someone would think about f causing Kenyans to, re uh, to resign when things are, are going bad. Uh, public opinion, you know, by the way, sometimes public opinion. If today you ask um, among this panel, you, know, you ask you know, who's the most corrupt among this panel, it will be interesting to see. I mean, it will be interesting. Omogeni or, <laughs> or Pogisha or, or well, losing, uh, you, Using the boarding language. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, they, if they teach a bit. What, what, what will you, yes. So, so but, but, but you see, public opinion knows. Kenyans know each other. When you say who is the most corrupt, you know, who is the most reckless in speaking? Who is the most, is, we know these people. It's just that Kenyans have that culture of just keeping yourself uh, tucked in most of the time. So, so I'd, like, I'd like to encourage that. Uh, I think we better move to the direction where if you feel like you can't serve a government, you just quit. If you feel like it's too tough for you that hurdles have been put in your place, you, you really don't have a place to go. You just, you just say, I'm resigning. Uh, if, if you find that um, fingers, too many fingers are pointing at you, please look at the mirror or look, look at, at something. So I, I do want to say that uh, it may, it's about time, uh, is that we've been challenged by, by countries like Singapore, that unless someone important in Kenya is found culpable, Thank you. Uh, we, we are not fighting uh, right. right. We need to take a short break. When we circle back, we shall hear from Okongo Mogini on this as well. And do you think, actually, this call for Deputy President William Ruto to resign is premature and uncalled for? Let's hear what uh, your reactions are. And uh, you can cross over to our Twitter handle, which is AMLiveNTV. AMLiveNTV, your profile name on Facebook, and 20686, our SMS button. Don't go away. for the Energy Management Awards, April 12, 2019, Safari Park Hotel.
Gavana wa kaunti ya Mombasa Mheshimiwa Hassan Ali Joho anawatangazia kuondolewa kwa riba ya kodi na adhabu kwa nyumba za makazi, biashara, viwanda na kilimo kuanzia tarehe moja hadi 31 Machi. Unaweza kufanya malipo katika National Bank of Kenya kutumia account number 0105500893400 au kupitia Mpesa Paybill number 4009999 account number ni nambari ya ardhi yako. Wasilisha makatasi ya benki katika Mombasa County assembly in Yoko Treasury Square Parada na Jumia Mobile look on the current state of play of politics of the week that has been and of course we continue apace with a conversation around graft in this country and the call for the deputy president William Ruto to resign we ask you do you think this is premature and uncalled for as some quarters of the opposition have been calling for and also some quarters of Jubilee have been calling for the resignation of the deputy president if not if you will not resign then the, he'll be forced to be he will actually be impeached, right? They'll force him to be removed from his current seat. But we want to hear from Congo Mogini. First of all, uh, we've had uh, Dr. Shemo Chuodo quoting uh, the Constitution there uh, around the impeachment of a deputy president. You, from your own estimation, you think this particular call is premature and uncalled for? What do you think? Mm. Uh, <coughs> thank you, thank you, Dabal. And uh, you know, first, uh, I, I, I sympathize with the opposition of the deputy president because. Uh, we all now acknowledge that uh, the Jubilee le leadership uh, led by the president is waging what I would call a credible war uh, against corruption. And it's something that this country has not seen for a long time. You know, most of the time we hear debates of small fish mm -hmm. uh, being uh, the, the ones under investigations being taken to court and not addressing the issue of uh, huge public resources being diverted into pockets of particular big people in government. And I think for the first time, the DCI has really gotten it right. We are now seeing investigations on colossal sums of money. You know, you're talking about billions going to 21 billion. Mm -hmm. And uh, money that was meant to do projects that are meant to be beneficial to the people that we as politicians serve. So I think as leaders, really, we must all rally behind the DCI to be given space to conduct investigations and do his recommendations to the office of the DPP. And if there are people who are culpable, then uh, action should be taken. But uh, I'm seeing a situation uh, where some people seem to be worried. They know more than some of us know. 
because people have come out to make allegations that this war against corruption is targeting them. Well, you know, in a proper functioning democracy like ours, we need first to understand against whom is the DCI recommending uh, charges to be preferred. So I think what worries me is a situation where uh, some political class, and, and I think this is led by the DP, has come out strongly to attack the office of uh, DCI and the office of DPP. I must uh, confess that that's not something that was envisaged by this new constitution. You know, when you talk about uh, what is in uh, chapter six on leadership and integrity, and you know integrity is a big animal. Integrity involves how you portray yourself to the public, how you behave as a person, how you reflect the position that you own. And then there is a statement in, in, in Article 73 that you as an office holder, as a state officer, your behavior must bring honor mm. and dignity to the office you hold. Mm. Now, can you really tell Kenya that you are bringing honor and dignity to your office when you are making statements that are geared towards stopping or scaring an independent office like that one of the DCI from conducting investigations? I think that's not very healthy. And we can all see that we used to have a Jubilee Kieleweke, Jubilee Tanga Tanga, I think now we're having <laughs> Jubilee Tetea Waisi and Jubilee Ngoa Wafisai, which is not a, a very good thing. I think we all need to see Jubilee, which says Ngoa Wafisai. So to that far, I'm not very comfortable with the behavior of some certain leaders. And then when you go to that Article 150, you know, there's an animal that was introduced in that constitution, but we have not tested what Kenyans intended. You know Article 50 that uh, my good friend Dr. Choda was making reference to? He says you can be removed from office for gross misconduct. Mm. Right. Now, what, what is gross misconduct? That's, that's something that really, if we had a parliament that is not uh, ethnicized and divided along political lines, mm -hmm. we would have put this to test. Let, let's let's mm -hmm. try and, and see a debate on the floor of the House that makes a determination. If you look at the conduct of some of our leaders, have they behaved in a manner that can lead to somebody making a conclusion that they have grossly misconducted themselves and the offices that they hold. Now, unfortunately, uh, I remember we were here some time, mm -hmm. and Honorable Kion <laughs> told us <laughs> that if anything goes to, to the House, yes. he will first be guided by the party but. belongs to, and <laughs> not on national interest. <laughs> and I think that's what we are lacking. A situation where Kenyans can cast their vote in Parliament, our, we as leaders, not on our political affiliations, but on national yes, interest. Yeah. And I think the national interest, we all agree on this panel, the national interest that we are defending now is a situation where we need the DCA to do thorough investigations against anybody holding whatever office in this country who is engaging in corruption, who has diverted public resources to their personal pockets. Unfortunately, if this issue was to get to the floor of the house, that national interest <laughs> is not necessarily what will guide mm -hmm. how members will vote. So I think a time has come, really. A time has come, really, when we must put uh, uh, Parliament to test, and we test the ability of Parliament to rise to the occasion. Dibana, I'll tell you this. When you go to the judiciary and to the executive, there is always resolve, revo resolve from uh, the leadership to make a decision that is, uh, you know, earth-shaking. If it's the executive, you can see the president is telling you whether you are my closest political ally. <laughs> if you are engaged in corruption, I'll fight you. There is a judiciary which says, which, which has given judgments in the past, which shows that they will not spare anybody. Look at uh, the decision that was made by Judicial Service Commission on the case of the Dupit uh, Chief Justice of the, the Republic, Nasi Baraza. Yeah. She it, that was gross misconduct. She just misconducted herself and the judiciary said, we remove you. The question, I'm, when has Parliament ever risen to the occasion? When have we been given an issue? And to restore our faith in the Kenyan people, we have acted in national interest. I think this is the moment. This is the moment. If Parliament was to seize the moment, it will change the trajectory, the way Kenyans look at us, and we also assert the, uh, you know, the independence of that institution called Parliament. Mm -hmm. I wish my colleagues here. The I moment. wish my colleagues here mm -hmm. right. can seize the moment and put national interest first over our political affiliation, our ethnic affiliations. Whether that will happen, time will tell.
but, but, but I need this specificity <laughs> with my question that I've given to you or I've actually put to you. Yeah, do you think it is premature? Do you think actually he should resign? I mean, issues of uh, resignation is, is something that you sh should speak to your conscience. But I think, uh, to be fair, Debar, we have uh, an office of this year that is conducting investigations. What I expect to happen is that uh, <coughs> the DPP should peruse the files that have been forwarded to him. And if there is anything linking the DP to this scandal, then there we can come out and say, please resign. As, as of now, and that's why I began by saying <coughs> some people are saying that uh, this war is targeting them. Yet, we don't, personally, I've, I don't have an idea Thank you. who, is, uh, Let, let's who has been singled out for prosecution. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so let us hear from Jared. Uh, uh, well, <coughs> let, let me firstly take a cue from what Senator Pogisio said. Yes. That you do not expect somebody to swindle public finances uh, if he or she is stupid. You must be very extraordinarily sharp with high, you know, intellect, uh, IQ, in order that you can, you know, take public monies and use it for your own selfish, uh, you know, aggrandizement. So, uh, having said that, people always tell, uh, from what we have read, because I don't subscribe to that notion, so that they use the same monies to fight any war that is likely to erupt uh, surrounding uh, those, the, those finances. So firstly, we did expect that corruption will definitely fight back. Once a scandal is unearthed, you definitely do believe, or rather you know, expect that those people will come out. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first you know, call that I have consistently seen in this country is people running back to their ethnic uh, cocoons and saying that we are the target as a community. Yet when they are stealing, they're just by themselves. So we have seen, uh, and this is uh, very much against the Constitution, that very important or key government appointments during the Jubilee reign, right from 2013, were apportioned to particular tribes. And you see the composition of the board of KVDA, an agency that is now shrouded with lots of uh, a scandal mystery uh, around it. The composition is entirely from one ethnic community, which is against the Constitution. And therefore, if a scandal erupts in such an agency and people are being fought, then they are very easily, they, they would quickly say that, you know, we are the target as a community. Yet the original sin was to go against the Constitution uh, ignore regional balance in key public appointments and go to your community. So that, that therefore becomes the, the, the real issue here. Uh, number two is uh, we have had enough times that the fight against corruption in Kenya currently is a fight against Ruto. And he has himself come out to say this, that what we are hearing out there are just sideshows, yet he's the main target. I don't know why I would be very concerned about an investigation going on anywhere if I'm not privy or I'm not part of that scandal. I would be least interested. Similarly, uh, for me, I don't smoke. So if you tell me that the prices of you know, cigarette would be double tomorrow, it doesn't bother me because I don't smoke. I don't subscribe to that notion. So if investigations are being carried out and no one from what I am gathering has implicated Ruto in any way or in any sector or in any corruption scandal. No one. But he's coming out to really fight so viciously as if there is something he knows that we don't. I don't know whether the three days that Rotage spent uh, with the DCI could have, because I don't work for the DCI, could have mentioned him. But you see, he's coming out fighting so viciously that every Kenyan is left wondering whether he's part of that corruption scandal. But, you know, the investigations are going on. 2022 issues are being brought in order to cloud this matter of corruption. Because it is very easy to say that he has declared, and let me tell you, in this country, as far as I know, it is only the deputy president who has come out uh, so strongly to say he's going to be a candidate in 2022. No one else, uh, unless you're talking about other jokers. His main target 
uh, who is Raila Odinga in this respect, has not said he's going to contest anyway, has never given any slightest of indication that he's going to be in the ballot. But he's now trying to use 2022 in order to win public sympathy that because he's sitting at a vantage position to seize power, people are now using corruption to fight his bid. We is far away from it. I would suggest, uh, uh, perhaps he's listening now, mm -hmm. that he would just keep his cool. Let investigative authorities do their work. And if at such a point that he will be implicated in a way, let him graciously resign. Thank you. But the mere fact that he's putting roadblocks on this journey towards cleaning the system, that we attain public purity, <coughs> then he's as culpable, uh, guilty as charged. So that is what I would uh, you know, suggest to the deputy president, to just give investigative uh, authorities powers to, to, to act. Uh, but, finally, but, if but, you allow but, but, me. No, no, but, but the question we will be again, uh, briefly, is, uh, I don't want to call it mere pronouncement, but his pronouncement about yeah, him uh, being uh, you know, targeted and uh, the DCI is being manipulated. Uh, <laughs> he, he, does that really warrant, as you see, uh, or can, I, can, can we actually s uh, say that this really uh, boils down now to what you're saying, blocking? Oh, it is. It is a matter of blockade because, you know, the DCI himself, <coughs> apart from summoning a few individuals to go and record statements, particularly around Aurora and Kimura Dam, he has never mentioned anyone out here. In Thank fact, you. the deputy president's name features absolutely nowhere. But his reaction, you know, I remember when we were young children and my mother could have asked certain, uh, you know, transgressions within the family. And we will be very quick to say, oh, I'm not part of it. And yet we know we are part of it. Otherwise, why would you be bothered? Right, thank you. So it, it, it stems from that. If you allow me, finally, we, we know that even if an impeachment motion will be brought, and my brother Pogish has brought it so, so well, uh, the forces of corruption will still fight back. They will, uh, we saw it during the sugar report, when the, the report was cut out, even before it, uh, it saw the, the floor of the house. And there were allegations that I don't know whether were proven or not, because I wasn't around by the time, that certain MPs were actually given some little tokens in order to thwart uh, the entry of that report on the floor of the house. If a sugar report can be, you know, worked on in that degree, thank you. Then what about somebody losing All right. uh, such a vantage office okay. uh, on the land? Thank you, Jamal uh, Let me ask you, from the pr pronouncement of the president over corruption over the years, do you think what you're seeing so far is just uh, a matter of uh, uh, s s style and no substance? No, no, the bar, like, I, I Because think yes, we, we we've had. He will work on corruption. Yeah, those people who are implicated on corruption should resign. I will be very hard on them. But there is no remedial action, you know, no. to, to, to warrant all those pronouncements after, you know, he's met them. Yeah, but, but Dipan, let us give uh, credit where it's due. Since 1963, I don't think we have had a, 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 a statement. Let me just rephrase it. Since 1963, we have not had a person in the office of the president who has fought corruption more than the current president, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. And uh, without doubt, uh, Kenyans now believe, like uh, Mugeni has said, and I think uh, Senator uh, Pogizo, that um, he has won the minds of Kenyans. He has won even the, the leadership of NASA in the, this fight against corruption. He is committed to it. And, uh, but it is also important that uh, when you listen to him also, uh, quote him properly, uh, not like uh, Senator Pogizo has done. How is he quoted? He, uh, I want to read his quote so that he, uh, I'm sure he has the paper with him. Let me just what, finish. What, what is this is from which, 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 which paper? I haven't, don't, be, don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't said it. You're already a bit uh, fidgety. Which paper are you reading from? <laughs> no, we want to be one tired. of the papers you gave me, I, I didn't come in with anything. Oh, this Saturday nation. It might be another journal that I, I know. I'm not aware I think of. I'm don't take me by surprise, please. <laughs> what did he say? It is, if, if. That's 23rd. That's 23rd. Nation. Yes. As I said, I credit him with a good degree. He should read this also. If you are corrupt, and the, the thing is, if okay. you are corrupt, okay. he did not say that my sister and my brother and uh, closest political friend are, are corrupt. He said, yes. if you are corrupt, we will fight you. 
you can be my brother or my sister or my closest political ally. But if you are corrupt, we will fight you. So that doesn't mean that... Exactly uh, what I said. No, no. You, no they, they, okay, fine. I, yeah, yeah, you can, exactly. You'll have an opportunity yes. to restate it. But what I wanted <laughs> to say is that uh, it, he did not say that his brother, his uh, sister, his closest political ally are corrupt. But he was trying to make it clear to Kenyans that he's going to spare nobody. And that we are 100% with him. And okay. we are happy. But, but we are, yes, we, no, no, thank you. No, 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 just a moment. We are happy, yes. But this is not the first time we've heard from the president saying this. Yeah, but Dibal. So we should be in happy. In this country, when did we see uh, a cabinet minister in the office of, uh, in, or from Treasury talking to uh, our friends at Karura for that long and coming out looking lily like something is really happening? All of us are expecting to see uh, things happen. And I don't take it away from the, this country. Don't take, away, take it away from the president. We are on course, and we should support him. If there are people throwing, I don't like what I see some uh, colleague members of parliament doing when they go to public places and in uh, churches, trying to wage wars against the institutions that are fighting corruption, that I will never support. But equally, we will not be having this debate in the format that we have it today if it wasn't for the failure on the part of NASA. NASA are actually a total failure on this account. When fighting corruption, mm -hmm. they should have done what we suspected of them in the minority party. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying, bring a motion of uh, impeachment. It helps the country move on. So it, people can you don't have money. No, no. It, well, uh, if you came over, allow me, the bar, the bar, you know the, the thing is that the, the, uh, if Raira had chick uh, was to cow him, um, then he must have failed completely. We thought it was to make him a better, Ken to fight, to do things in a better way, but not to look like he, he just came to Jubilee to fight William. Because that is an unfortunate thing that is looking. He cannot target one person and it becomes his daily activity uh, every day. It's fine. We expected him. It me, is the other uh, way. Uh, uh, MP Nyando. <laughs> it is rude uh, to attack Allow me to either. just finish. <laughs> you know, if NASA was doing what we expected, instead of just uh, coming for uh, press reviews, if you had these motions on the floor of the House, <laughs> this fight against corruption would have moved a notch higher, would be helping the president. But now, Coming within uh, into Jubilee, which is a good thing, it has given us uh, stability, it's given us economic growth, we are doing many things we do not have done before, but they should not have lost their sting as to what they should be doing as a minority party. I cannot file a motion of impeachment uh, for members within Jubilee. It, uh, we would want them to do it, and uh, we would want them to, to be fighting it in a better way, but you cannot come within uh, Jubilee and then start uh, looking like you are the one aggrieved more than those who are there. <laughs> While you had your position, which you abandoned, right. look at it. Look at the, the cartoon that you have given us there. Yeah, but this is the cartoon, is the reverse of what you're saying, yes, actually. Uh, yeah. uh, you are seeing it that with cartoons, you are supposed <laughs> to interpret them uh -huh. the way no, you see who them. Who? You see, who is the, the, he the, is just popping uh, from under, from all the holes. Uh, within, he's just trying to poke holes through, within Jubilee, and it is our work to keep the holes uh, closed. Right. But all time, whenever you look, <laughs> who, at, it works to, to keep the, now, the holes closed. Minute, in every hole, you are only seeing the 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 one head. Ideally, if NASA was uh, useful, we would be seeing a little bit more uh, of activity, not just. Um, <laughs> One person popping the okay. head. But these NASA fellows have really let us down as a country. They no, no, just a moment. And the, no, 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 the, the impeachment uh, motion just uh, can uh, also uh, come from uh, the Senate uh, so that Pogiso and uh, Omogeni... Uh, let's go uh, sequentially. Let's just have the cartoon uh, uh, while... I wish you'd allow uh, me to just say this. We can also have the impeachment motion coming from the Senate. In any case... Okay, we, will come, we, we have uh, Senator Pogiso and... Uh, but the Senate has been thank doing you. everything National thank Assembly. You, thank you. Why not this impeachment motion? The, the All right. file. So this particular cartoon, actually, uh, we said earlier, it's uh, for a multi... What? Hydra-headed uh, <laughs> dragon of corruption, so to speak. But that, this is a whack a mole uh, game. Actually, you can see Druton is the one who's trying to, to work, right? Or yeah, I think he was hitting the correct me. Me. Yeah, on this... Comment on this cartoon first. I, I wanted to take it from a different angle, but still come to that. I, I think uh, I want to encourage Honorable Kelo and um, other ODM MPs to listen very carefully to what Mwishimua Kioni is saying. 
it's quite key. This morning as we were coming into the city, I was asking my, my girls, what's your general feeling of how Kenya, the direction Kenya is going and where we are? One of them did say, well, both of them did agree there's disillusionment. But one said, it's beyond disillusionment. I just, it's just hopelessness. I no longer worry about it. And this is a general feeling of a, a good, significant number of Kenyans. Figure, when yeah. we reduce our issues to Raila and Ruto, in my view, I think we are cheapening this matter. That's why um, I wanted to comment on that particular regard. You know, when you're talking about integrity and, and, and uh, the DCEI holding, doing its work, and it's commendable what the government is doing, which needs to be encouraged. You know, was it a handshake? Was it a handshake? We, nobody's talking about that. We seem to be focus, focusing in a particular direction. This should be unidirectional. My view is that let's allow the DCIO, the DPP, the ESCC CEO, and the AG, they're doing a commendable job. Can the politicians focus on what would move this country forward? I want them to give inspiration to my child and my grandchild mm. and others, which I don't see in the leadership now. Perhaps the entire lot of including us on this table, including Shep, mm. maybe we just step aside. Can we allow new leadership? If we cannot inspire Kenya and move it forward, we're losing golden opportunity to drive this country forward, to make it great we are talking about very little, little things, just fighting back and left, yes. but not addressing the real issues. In terms of fighting graft, there are institutions doing their work, there's the judiciary, but now we are even messing up that very judiciary. Mm -hmm. So I'm not inspired at all. Yeah. All, uh, all of us, Anito, uh, Pogiso, we are not inspired at all. No. First of all, if you were to support the president on this, uh, you as Senate, you as, uh, uh, of course, the National Assembly, we need to see action as well that is in tandem with what the president is saying from your end. If we have Jared now saying that the deputy president should be impeached, they should come up with a motion, first of all. Because all this talk about corruption in this country is, is just treading waters. Yep. We are just treading waters and moving nowhere, right? We'll have all these exercises, handcuffs, people, you know, being paraded uh, on media that are being arraigned in court. But after that, it tapers off. It's the same story. We'll have commissions being put, you know, or, or yeah, set up to come and investigate this or probe this particular corruption cases. You know, meetings after meetings, uh, having live also, you know, media coverage on this. But nothing else really comes from this. I think Kenyans are tired. Mm. Kenyans want to see action, not treading waters over the years. We tread waters, uh, or, or not treading waters over the matters of Goldenberg. You've seen those exercises in courts then, up to today. What action has been actually uh, taken on Goldenberg? We still don't have our money. So parliamentarians, and we'll come to you again, because it seems then we're not getting any action uh, from parliament decisively on corruption. And I think this is an opportunity, a handy opportunity for you to yes. put forth a firm hand and help the president. Deepa, first of all, I, I must agree uh, 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 once in a while with uh, uh, Andrew Bakioni. Once in a while. Yeah, on, on, on some things. <laughs> and, and that is on the fact that this is, this is probably the best the president of Kenya has put to fight corruption. I mean, in history. Uh, and, and the president Kenyatta has the intentions to fight corruption. Now, he leaves this thing, you know, you know really, ideally, if a president makes a pronouncement like that, there are policymakers and there are, there are institutions mm -hmm. in government that must take up that declaration and put it into, break it down into ways uh, that, that make it legal and so on. And so it's a challenge upon now. Once he has made that declaration, he sh we should be now, Parliament should come on board, the DCI and others come on board, anti-corruption authority come on board, everyone come So we need to support him. That he has declared that in, in his mind, he has no, is the no, no two ways about corruption. It has to be fought. We have a problem in Parliament. We have a problem in Parliament because if, if you listen, for example, I, we are in the Jubilee Party, for example, we're part of this big Jubilee. If you listen to the person, the people on top of the Jubilee Party, the, 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 the party uh, leadership, for example, in Parliament, take for example, you know, you hear about a weekend, the leader of the majority in, 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 in the Senate. That, that's the person we're relying on to give us direction, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's the same thing with the leader majority on the side. So, so you find, you find it's, it's so, so common. Remember you are 
Yeah, you, you elected it. I mean, but, but that's what we're asking. Where, where is that? Exactly. Even yeah. if the leader of the majority, <laughs> yeah, he, he's taking a position. Oh, yeah, on he, has, he, has, he has a position. Yes. And, 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 and <laughs> you were given. Yes. <laughs> they were given. They but you're not in the Senate. They were given. Yes. Okay. Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway the 31st of August, <laughs> they were instructed. The, the, well, no, the, all the, right. The, no, let's, let's just come back to what it is. What it is really is that. I, I, th I think some of the things that uh, Mwishima Kioni has said, that the opposition party, the minority party, has the, uh, the responsibility, really, to, insti to institute some of these things. They, you may not even make a dent, but the intent is there to show that the seriousness of this fight against corruption. Uh, the, coming back to the cartoon, the cartoon is, is not very... You see that cartoon, there's only one person working very hard, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> working on an individual. And, and, and it's, it's not even really. It, it is that the, the, there is a nightmarish uh, uh, problem there, where the 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 <laughs> honorable <laughs> Riley seems to be popping up everywhere. <laughs> I, I mean, you're, you're eating lunch. The guy is popped up. You're doing this. You want to turn around. So we don't know. Why. So so <laughs> it's, it's the idea. Is where where are you going to find the the one to hit? Yeah. Because they're all over the place. <laughs> and I think that's the complication having here because now the issues are too many and they're all held up there. In, yeah. uh, in so, so Raila is a mall actually. So, so he's, <laughs> he's a mall and uh, he's about to pop on every, everywhere. He's popping up everywhere. There, there are two holes actually. So don't now there is yet. one hole, I think, there in the center. If you were to pop up from there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 ser serious. I mean, yeah. we we have to agree that my my colleague uh, Morgan has said this. Let's, for for once, I think Parliament is now under the microscope. The Parliament, the entire Parliament, is under the microscope. And I, and I think we we need now to uh, do something that Kenyans can think. Thank you. Of uh, redeeming Parliament. Right. And the image of Parliament. Okay, uh, Senator Congo Morgan. We always talk about. The fight against corruption in this country, you know, we have good intentions, but there is no political will. I don't think now the position of a president, that is the epitome of political will. Mm -hmm. you be, you've always been belly aching and complaining here and crying foul that there, there is no political will in this country to fight corruption. What other political will do we expect other than this? Is, isn't this the zenith? Yep. Yeah, the epics no, of actually think, political uh, will? The, the president is doing very well, but uh, you know, we just need to uh, add some more fuel to his car so that it can arrive at the right destination. Um, you know, there, is, there are two ways you can fight uh, uh, corruption. One, political will, which will be at the political table, and the other one is prosecution, which should be in court. The Bali, if you want to Rwanda, <coughs> if, if, if Rotich was in Rwanda, you would not be a cabinet secretary by now. You will be in the slammers. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, you will be in the chair. So w what we are now waiting from the president, for God's sake, the moment you have somebody who is so adversely mentioned in particular scandals, what we expect from His Excellency the President is to exercise the stick that he holds and ask those particular cabinet secretaries to exit office. So it's, you make it very uncomfortable for some of these constitutional office holders. You can imagine if an, a, a meeting is called by the president where you find Rotich is there, uh, DPP is there, DCI is there, you're intimidating these other guys, the DCI and the DPP. So I think a time has come when we now expect the, pol the uh, president to take the, the political angle a notch higher and mm. ask these particular cabinet secretaries to step aside. That will now open the gates for the DCI, DPI to feel that for real now we enjoy the very political goodwill that we have been looking for. I wish that can happen even tomorrow. Number two, uh, don't we have actually tried also as members of parliament. Remember that if you read the, the May's report uh, where the Senate was carrying out investigations around the improprieties by particular cabinet secretaries, Dibali will find that C.S. Rotich is mentioned, and that is a unanimous resolution by the, the Senate, is mentioned as somebody who was culpable and recommendation was made to the DCI to conduct investigations against that particular office. Three, there is goodwill. We also imagine, as we speak, the Judicial Service Commission has written to the President to appoint uh, an, uh, I mean, a tribunal to look into the conduct of a judge of the Supreme Court. There are only seven in this country. 
Imagine. And uh, the issues around him is that the allegations of impropriety on, on, on misconduct and on money that may have exchanged hands. I mean, what better do you need than that kind of, of goodwill? Then finally, it is really dishonest. Um, and this one I have to differ with my friend, uh, Moshimo Akioni. I don't see how you bring Honorable Rail Odinga in this war against corruption. The DCI was appointed by the president, uh, Mugai Kenyatta. DPP was appointed by the president to spearhead the war against corruption. <coughs> do you want to tell us that uh, Raila Amol Odinga controls how the DCI <coughs> makes decisions? <laughs> that Raila Odinga controls how DPP makes That is so cheap. And I don't think there is any Kenyan who can, who can believe. I don't even think that by the time the DCI was summoning Rotich and others, that Raila Odinga knew that 21 billion shillings had been stolen. So I think that is a war that is very diversionary. And as a, a country, we need to put a stop. And I want to echo what happened in our church yesterday at page 7 of, uh, of, of the, this is the people did. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are Jubilee MPs who are chased away from church, and the church told them, don't bring your politics here. You know, because we need to to, to start yes, uh, having a public that can <laughs> say no. Is that, is, is, is that, that that is not the Hallelujah Church that uh, <laughs> Gary was attending yesterday? Is it the Hallelujah Church? Is that, is that, but what I'm telling you, the point I'm making the bad, the point I'm making the bad <laughs> no, is that uh, we, we we want the Kenyan <laughs> people. Uh, can I be protected? Let, yeah, please, I, I let want finish. Say, yes, yes. <laughs> but the point I'm making is that we want to reach a situation whereby the Kenyan people can say no to some of these shenanigans. You know, if you go to a public podium and you're trying to, to tell the people that uh, this war against corruption is targeting Thank a, you. a particular people, we as a people, Dibal, mm -hmm. should be able to say a big no. Let's allow the institutions that have been tasked with this mandate Thank you. to do their investigations. All right. And those who are innocent can have their day maybe in court or, or in another forum. Earlier we had uh, Pogizos telling us that Parliament is under microscope. Yeah, he's under the probe of a microscope. But yes, let's see what is on the front page of uh, the standard today. I think we, 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 we've we sufficed what uh, everyone has said on... No, 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 we have stop of time. Stop of time. So we want to actually focus on this. MPs, what is all this on the front page of the standard and the people daily today? <laughs> Well, I, I'm reading it for the first time, uh, to be very uh, factual. Uh, but first things first, we have a new constitution. And the new constitution had came up with several commissions and several government agencies. And one fundamental requirement of the constitution is to align everything government with the new constitutional dispensation. I remember uh, the CDF Act of 2013, after the promulgation of the new constitution, which only gave two tires <coughs> of uh, government for disbursement of public funds, and that was the national government and the county government. The matter went before court because the CDF Act of 2013 had not been put in line with the constitutional requirements. And when the matter went to court, uh, parliament had to move an amendment that therefore ultimately did align the CDF Act to the Constitution and renamed it National Government CDF Act. I think that was in 2014, 2015. So that is a constitutional requirement. All the commissions, independent commissions, are aligned to the Constitution except one, which is Parliamentary Service Commission. Yes. And what the intent of what now is you know, being bandished around is that Parliament wanted their commission, which is Parliamentary Service Commission, to be in line with the Constitution. Now, there are many things that uh, came up during that, uh, that period, or that discussion, one of which was that members of Parliament, both in the Senate and the National Assembly, even though all public uh, officers, you know, have access to uh, house allowance, it was thought that members of parliament should equally benefit mm -hmm. from this housing scheme. Now, people commonly talk about uh, mortgage, that MPs you know, have a mortgage and therefore are not eligible mm -hmm. to, uh, ha to house allowance. But you know, mortgage is a loan, and I think this is something that has not been put into perspective. So if I go to a bank, to get some loans to do certain projects, including building a home, 
that, that is money that I will be paying back at the end of the day. In fact, uh, parliamentary mortgages are so fine-tuned that by the time you are yet to leave parliament, you shall have paid the whole of it. And that is a loan. So what the argument was that why would parliament, parliamentarians be discriminated against when it comes to matters house allowance? So I think that was the gist uh, of the matter then. Mm -hmm. Of course, the uh, uh, SRC uh, said that, you know, uh, MPs should not be given any allowance and the amount of money that they are given in the name of a salary is a collection, is an accumulation of all those put together. And when they were taken through uh, the mathematics, uh, thank you. at the end of the day, Jared. only 30,000 shillings remained to be called house allowance. Thank and you, you wonder where 30,000 no, no, no. taken. No, no, Let's just cut to the chase. And uh, of course, you've given us elaborate uh, you know, background where this is coming from. I just want to know from you uh, where all this implementation is, is coming through and we, they are, they've actually been splashed on the front page of a standard. Right. Are they true? First well, of all, accommodation allowance to keep them comfortable in the city. Well, is there you know, anything? You know, the, 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 the standard newspaper has said that MPs would want to be accommodated in five star <coughs> hotels in Nairobi. I don't know what will happen to my house. So I, uh, that is what I said at the very initial, uh, that I'm reading that for the first time here. Uh, from that newspaper. It is that something that has not come before Parliament. It has not been subjected to any debate. And if at all it will come to debate that MPs would want to live in a five-star hotel, I will be the first person to discard it and to oppose it vehemently for the common interest of the nation. But following also the parliamentary proceedings, I think some of the issues here were, were raised uh, also on the floor of the House. Issues of uh, cooks to ensure MPs eat five-star meals. I think that was there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I, I'm privy to that. So this is just not innuendo. Uh, let, let this me is just, just something that actually people are discussing. You remember when you're discussing about issues yeah. uh, on the floor of the house that, yeah, we, we don't have any good housekeeping, especially in, in Parliament? Four of us in this panel are members of Parliament. Please. Four of us. Yeah. But I want you to know that MPs eat at the cafeteria at their own expense. It is something we pay for. It is not for free. I wish it would be free, but we have to pay for every meal that we take is, in that is, house. Is that a crime? It is not a crime, but yeah. you know, when, I, when I'm paying for something, uh -huh. when I'm paying for something, why would I still be vindicated? I mean, you know, harshly indicted for paying, using my own money <laughs> to feed myself. But where what is you, the problem with that? Where, where were you indi indicted on this, on paying? Where? I don't, well, you have just read it. That, that those are demands we are making. No, this is I some of the demands you're I, I making. The you know, point, yeah. The point that Mushimura is making is that uh, I think we have a member services uh, committee, but uh, it only has a uh, space in the national assembly, so we don't have that committee in the senate. But uh, whatever recommendation they, they make should be beneficial to both the senate and the national assembly. I think the point Mushimura is making is All right. that. Uh, Let me jump you because they, I think they, here there's, a, there's a problem with the mic. Let me try and fix it okay. and head over to Jeremiah Kioni on this as we fi try and fix our <coughs> Okongo Morgan's uh, mic. Uh, many things, Dibal. You abandoned the topic before you gave us an opportunity <coughs> to. <laughs> Which topic? The, the final word. The, final the impeachment. The impeachment. I don't know. I think no, we should talk exhaustively. I know that. we have. But uh, <coughs> one, two things I want to say and the quick ones. Allow me to say. One <coughs> is that uh, in that cartoon, uh, DP is working very hard to ensure that uh, Jubilee promises to Kenyans are fulfilled. We, they are we, not interrupted. We are past two, that junction. And that cartoon. Uh, even where, before where the cartoon that was there. There's two, nothing. They, 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 they say, <laughs> so that you again mis <laughs> misled us. And back. these are the papers you gave us. <laughs> what do you mean these are the papers I you gave say You say that uh, Jubilee and were thrown out of the church. It's actually the commander-led team that was thrown out of a church in 